What's good everybody, my name is Malcolm and welcome back to Pitside where we discuss everything football related. Now if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Also, make sure you do all those things to help the channel grow. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and it helps me make videos just like this. But with all that being said, let's just talk about the Champions League semifinal between Chelsea and Real Madrid. You know, the semifinals when, you know, players start to dream about winning the Champions League because you're just so close to the final. And honestly, as a Real Madrid fan, I'm happy to walk away with a 1-1 draw in a Champions League semifinal first leg. And that's because Real Madrid did not play that well against Chelsea. And that's completely understandable because Real Madrid have been dealing with a lot of things as of late. You know, injuries to major key players, COVID haunting the squad, and trying to juggle La Liga and the Champions League and trying to go deep into those competitions and hopefully win one or both of those competitions. But this match, Real Madrid didn't play too well. The Real Madrid team characteristically likes to dominate midfield with the likes of Tony Cruz, Casemiro, Luka Modric, and sometimes Valverde um, in the starting lineup. But in this match in particular, um, compared to other matches, Real Madrid's midfield looked slow, out of touch, and fatigued, which is completely understandable with everything that's going on this season, especially having to deal with 53 injuries. A lot of these players have not rested for this portion of this season. Real Madrid's midfield also is very effective in pressing, but in this match in particular, Chelsea was able to just pass around and keep possession in a very effective manner um, whenever they face a Real Madrid press. So that's another thing that wasn't going for Real Madrid in this match. And if I'm also being completely honest, Real Madrid did not really create any dangerous chances this match. The only two dangerous chances I really remember Real Madrid creating was uh, the Benzema shot from outside the box that I think hit the post, I'm not sure, but on the replay it looked like it hit the post, and the Benzema goal obviously which came from a set piece um, and the ball just being juggled around in the box. I also don't think Real Madrid's attack played well at all this match in particular. Um, it also kind of highlights how much Real Madrid are depending on Benzema's fitness. If Benzema goes down injured, and this Real Madrid attack is finished and they're relying on Benzema's form because if Benzema dips in form, I don't see anyone else really scoring for Real Madrid on a consistent basis. The Don started with three center backs and uh, which kind of gave Marcelo and Carvajal freedom to go forward and create chances for our forwards, um, Vinicius and Kareem Benzema. But I also believe that Chelsea did a very good job defending in the fullback positions because Marcelo and Carvajal did not find themselves in dangerous positions going forward and did not create any really dangerous chances or put any really dangerous crosses into the box. Besides that one Marcelo cross that uh, came from the set piece, which of course resulted in Benzema's goal. But other than that, Marcelo and Carvajal were not able to stretch Chelsea and create chances for our forwards. I also think Azul Paqueta did a really good job defending uh, Vinicius from any dangerous counterattacks or even trying to create dangerous uh, chances on the dribble. Um, but for a large portion of this match, Vinicius was out of sight and out of mind. And I think the Chelsea fullbacks did a really good job just trying to defend uh, Real Madrid as Real Madrid tried to stretch them. Chelsea's midfield not only was able to beat the Real Madrid press, but they got really physical with Real Madrid's midfield. They weren't afraid to lay a body on Real Madrid's midfield. And a lot of times you saw Modric and Casemiro losing the ball after some physical approaches from the Chelsea midfield. Conte's presence was really felt in this match and I think he was the best midfielder on the pitch today. You know, not only was he asked to make some important tackles to try to stop Real Madrid's attack and midfield, but he had to run up and down on the pitch multiple times to try to get to try to transition Chelsea from midfield to attack and he was not afraid to get physical with Luka Modric, Tony Cruz and Casemiro. So I think Chelsea had a really good game in midfield. I also believe Mason Mount was incredible in this match as well. I know his performance might go under the radar because he didn't get a goal or he didn't get an assist, but he was also alongside Conte, he was also responsible for trying to transition Chelsea from midfield to attack. And he did a very good job a lot of the time. And um, a lot of the times he even, I think he even set up um, Warner up multiple times, especially for that chance that Warner missed in the first half, early in the game in the first half. But in other words, I was really impressed with the way Mason Mount and Conte were pushing the ball forward every time that Real Madrid did lose a ball or every time Real Madrid did try to press Chelsea's midfield. Moving on to Chelsea's attack, you know, if I'm a Chelsea fan, I'd be kind of pulling my hair out because, you know, Chelsea should have walked away from this match with more than one away goal. Um, we saw that early chance that Werner missed um, in the beginning of the game. And it kind of highlights how important Courtois is 
to this Real Madrid team as well. And it makes a case for Courtois for being possibly the best goalkeeper in the world because if, if Chelsea had scored that chance and walked away from this match with more than one away goal, then I'd be pretty nervous as a Real Madrid fan. You know, Real Madrid are gonna take two positives away from this match. The first positive is that Real Madrid only conceded one away goal, which is not too big of a deal because it just means you have to go there and score only one goal to cancel out Chelsea's away goal. The second positive is that Real Madrid's squad is only gonna get stronger in the second leg. There's talks that Mendy, Sergio Ramos, and Valverde will be back, who will probably all slip into the starting lineup. And we don't know if Eden Nazar will slip into the starting lineup, but that Real Madrid squad will only get stronger for the second leg. So Chelsea might end up regretting not making much more of a statement in this match by scoring more than one away goal. But if there's one thing that we can all take away from Chelsea is that they are a very serious team and club. And we also have to give credit to Tocho, you know. A lot of these guys that are playing for Chelsea right now, this is the first time that they've been in a Champions League semifinal. And he has them performing really well. He has them performing in big moments. You know, he's gotten results against Manchester City, Liverpool, and he, now he has a decent result against Real Madrid. Um, so I think, you know, Tuchel's done a really good job for Chelsea and it shows how serious their intentions are because they also are juggling uh, the Champions League, trying to stay in the top four position in the English Premier League and they're trying to win that FA Cup final as well. So it just shows you how serious of a team Chelsea has become in just three to four months. But if I were to give a prediction for the second leg, I, I have to believe in my team. I do believe Real Madrid will end up advancing to the final because they're only getting stronger in the second leg and they only have to cancel out one away goal. Um, I, I respect Chelsea. Anything can happen in a Champions League semifinal, but I do believe Real Madrid will end up going through. You know, comment below and share your thoughts about the game between Chelsea and Real Madrid. Um, who did you guys think deserved to win this match? Um, who do you guys think played better? And who do you guys think is going to advance to the final of the Champions League? If you made it this far, thank you for your time. Until next time, peace.